Welcome back to another episode of The Shack Show, and in this episode, I'm going to talk about pencil poppers. Uh, and I'm, I'm super excited for this because pencil poppers are one of my favorite plugs of all time. I've talked at length about fishing pencils and why I love fishing pencils, the different ways that I fish pencils. Uh, and I fish them in, in many different ways and many different spots, and I've evolved and I've seen guys that are very good at fishing topwater plugs and fish pencils way differently than me and catch really big fish. And then, you know, I'll fish them way differently from them and, and I catch really big fish. So it's one of those things that there's a, a large range of ways that you can work pencils. They work under many conditions and they catch fish, especially when the bass are being at their finickiest and when the bass are at their most aggressive. Uh, it's kind of a plug that hits both ends of the spectrum when the bass are feeding really aggressively. And then when you just can't get a bass to raise up and eat something, uh, you know, that sometimes a pencil is what you want to use. So I'm going to go through kind of the, the pencils that I use. Um, I really don't use a lot of different types of pencils. You're going to see here that like my primary use for pencils for striped bass and don't get me wrong, bluefish love pencils. And I have other pencils like cotton Cordell, for example, is, uh, their pencil is fantastic for bluefish, uh, but not as good for bass in my personal opinion. Um, and, uh, my, one of my favorite plugs for bluefish this year has been the, the dark matter, uh, pencil. Uh, it's been, it, it's a plastic pencil. Um, I like to fish plastic plugs when I'm fishing for, uh, bluefish or when there's bluefish in the area, because uh, they'll really chew up your wooden plugs. Although wooden plugs are great. Uh, I, I've caught a lot of bluefish this year and got them chewed up pretty good. Although I've had, <laughs> I've had some fishermen tell me some funny stories about how, you know, they can hook a bluefish without uh, getting it to eat your, uh, without getting it to chew their plug and stuff. So um, anyway, I wanted to talk about uh, just the tsunami talking poppers are another great one too. Um, I I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna insert video or if I'm gonna insert pictures, but uh, if I do, um, one of my biggest bass this fall came on the tsunami talking popper. It's one of my favorites. Uh, the tsunami talking poppers. Uh, this is the XD version. It was great in this scenario that I caught this bass because we had a pretty stiff wind coming in, huge surf, and I needed something to get out there. And this was able to get out there and I caught a really nice bass on it. Uh, you can see I upgraded the hook on this to a single, I cut the, the tail hook because I was worried it was going to bend out on me or break. But I upgraded the the belly hook to a uh, owner SD66, um, which is just an unbelievably strong and sharp hook. So it's hard for bass to spit this hook when they get when they eat it. So it's really good uh, as well as they won't bend that out because you catch pretty much a freaking tuna on this and it wouldn't get bent out. So that's why I love the Tsunami Taco Poppers. Uh, I have a small one, the same XD model, just small and still another owner on there. But because uh, you never know, like a pencil this size, you can catch really, really big fish with. So um, yeah, they're great. And then the last pencil that I use the most, these are the two that I use the most of, are the uh, Pumba Plug uh, Pumba pencils. These are fantastic. Uh, there's three different sizes, uh, that he makes. And I like the six inch and the seven inch are my two favorite. This pencil right here is, uh, a retired pencil from last season that I haven't thrown, but I always break it out for these. Uh, that's why the hooks are so rusted on it. But, uh, I've caught more 30 pound bass on this pencil right here than any other plug. I think I own maybe, maybe one of the, the Magnum walkers has gotten pretty close, but this pencil right here is caught. I mean, the the big bass off the beach that I got uh, last year, uh, it got a ton of bass off a rock that just was producing. And like, I don't know what the biggest one was, but probably 30, 35 pounds. Uh, the one off the beach was like 33. So like, there you go. That's a monster on this. Uh, and it's not a very big pencil at all. I mean, you'll see it's like, you know, it's a six inch pencil. It's, it's pretty small. Uh, and, uh, this one's like seven, uh, and, and they're heavy plugs. Uh, the reason I like heavier ones is they'll cast further, uh, in windy conditions. Um, so I like throwing these heavier guys and they're a little harder to work and, you know, your shoulders get a little sore working them. But, uh, I had a really, really big fish this year. I hooked up on a yellow, one of these, a yellow over white seven inch this fall, uh, when nobody else was catching anything to my left and my right, there's dozens of really good fishermen out there and the bass were just not eating anything. They're blitzing, but not 
they were blitzing separate pods here and there, but they weren't feeding, like you couldn't get them to hit anything. And I kind of won the lottery and I got one enormous bass to come up, eat my plug, big tail up on the surface. As soon as it gained traction though, snap my, my, my leader. And that one still haunts me because that was a really big bass. That was, that was over 30 pounds for sure. And we won't get into how big I potentially think it could have been, but it was a, it was a very large bass. So, um, for the most part, I fish wooden pencils. And the reason for that is, um, I think they, they cast further, uh, in some instances. Um, I think that they're not as loud, uh, and which can work a lot. Uh, it can work really well when, uh, the pen, the bass are being a little more finicky. They don't want to have a crazy amount of action, uh, in the water. And they're just looking for, you know, something that has a very realistic presentation, but not without all the extra noise that some of these plugs have rattles. And I don't know if this one, yeah, like there's a rattle in here. And sometimes, uh, the bass are not into all of that in my mind. That's what I think. And so sometimes they want wooden ones more. In my opinion, I think that tends to be during the summer uh, when there's when you're trying to pull like singular solo bass, that tends to be uh, the scenario where you want something that's not as loud, but still is gonna give off those crazy vibrations and uh, hopefully get, to get one of those bass's attention to come up and hit it. Um, and then one of the things that I was told that I always bring up and I've probably talked about before, but I will talk about again, uh, because I know a lot of you guys probably haven't heard me talk about this is, uh, uh, one of the guys I know who catches a lot of really big bass on pencil poppers in particular told me this. And I, uh, I, it really like kind of sunk into me because the, like I fish like for many years and caught a lot of bass on top water. And, uh, it always, it, I never, it never really dawned on me, but he said, spooks work great when there's bass in when the bass are competing against each other spooks work fantastic but pencils work really well when the bat when there's a singular fish like one big bass that's just down there in the water either you know digesting or just swimming along maybe looking for a meal but not actively super aggressively feeding pencils work will, will end up working better than spooks to raise those bass up uh, and get them to actually hit your plug. And that never really dawned on me, but then the more I thought about it, a lot of the time when I was hooking into those bigger bass on the spook, yeah, there's many times where I hooked on to one bass and it was far out at the end of my uh, cast and I never really got to see if there was competition with it. But I, there's many times where you'd have one bass come up after it and another bass that was definitely of a different size, but pretty like, you know, in the same realm of size, but not that much smaller, not that much bigger, if you get what I mean. I, like a school of really big fish. And so you could tell there are different fish coming after it, and then you'd hook one. And that happened a lot with the spooks. Another thing that would happen a lot is you're fighting a really big bass, and you're, as you're reeling it in, there's a school of three bass behind it that are this exact same size. And uh, I'd always be like, wow, you know, there's a school of really, really big bass there. And, uh, I had the only time I've ever had that happen was once uh, and this was extraordinary. I had this one bass. Um, I, I, I was working my pencil like crazy and the bass skied on it. I'd never seen a bass of this size do it. And it was like a 43 inch bass and it ate my plug and went five feet in the air. And I was shocked that a uh, striped bass would do that. And I also didn't know if I hooked the fish or not, but uh, I was just shocked that a bass would do that. And when I was reeling that fish in, I was like, that is just unbelievable. I actually didn't fight very hard to be like, which is kind of funny because you'd think that a bass that was willing to go flying out of the water for a plug would actually have fought a little bit. But uh, no, it really didn't really pull much drag. And I was able to get that bass in without it pulling much drag on pretty light drag for all things considered. And um, as I was getting that bass up to me, that was a 43 inch bass. I measured it. And as I was getting that bass up to me, there was a bass that was like almost twice as big as that, not almost, but it was like, it was like, yeah, it was almost twice as big. And the reason, I'm not saying lengthwise, it was twice as big, just like width wise. And just, it was just so much bigger than the one that I had next to it. And it was, you know, it was a very big bass. If the one that I caught was 25 pounds, roughly, well, plus or minus. 25 pounds, probably plus because the bass is 43. It's a pretty big, big fish. Um, the, the one that was with it was 40 pounds, 
45 pound, I mean, it was a huge fish. And so that was the only time out of all the big bass that I caught on pencils that uh, they were in a school that I knew that they were, they were in a school. There's many other times where there's just one off, I was throwing spooks, nothing was happening, nothing was happening. And then I switched over to a pencil and I casted it out there and I'm working the pencil and a bass come up, comes up and eats it and uh, it's just a one-off fish. And uh, that was, for the most part, when I would end up hooking fish with pencils. I always end up starting with spooks, but you can cover much more water with pencils just because you can fan cast out and you can cover a lot more water with the casting distance. is probably a good you know, third bigger than you can with some of the spooks. I mean, I can really cast a, a pencil far and then a spook's gonna go about half the distance. Um, and so for a, a lot of these pencils here, uh, you can, you're also going to see that they're not that big. I mean, a lot of guys you'll know, like at the canal and stuff, you'll be thinking about, oh, I want to throw the biggest pencils possible. And you know, I do have some big pencils on my wall, but those pencils I haven't thrown ever, nearly ever. And I get them and people give them to me and whatever. And so I have a bunch of really large pencils, but I don't throw them very much. Anything over seven inches is not really used. And the reason for that being, I think a lot of the profile that I'm trying to mimic are of adult bunker or mackerel. And uh, I can do that with a six inch pencil. I can do that with a seven inch pencil. And uh, it's not gonna give off too much of a, like it's not gonna be a ginormous profile. And obviously if the bass are feeding aggressively and they're big, it doesn't matter how big the pencil is. I mean, you could throw the biggest pencil out. That, like you could throw, what is the biggest one I have? I have like a monster Gibbs here. You could probably throw this. I don't even know how big this is, but you could probably throw this pencil at a bass that are blitzing on peanut bunker if they're like 25, 30, I mean, even smaller than that, and they'll probably get hooked. But like, if they're really blitzing, you could throw anything out there. But I'm talking about really big bass would eat this and it would be no problem. Also, schoolies would probably eat this too. But um, the, the what I really like strongly believe is that smaller pencils work better. And the reason for that is, uh, I, I think that, yeah, as I was saying, like, I think that they give off a profile that is very similar to what those, uh, adult bunker do and, uh, and mackerel for that matter, but also don't give off too much of a, uh, just it don't give off so much action and like that the bass don't want to hit it and don't want to eat it are like kind of confused by what it is. And it's just almost too big. Or if they're a little finicky, they're not going to want to actually go through with it and commit to eating the pencil. Uh, and that's why I like using smaller pencils. And uh, that's one of my, um, one of my favorite uh, things to throw is like smaller pencils on lighter gear. That's like one of my favorite things to do. I did a lot of it this year and I was very successful. There's not a lot of big bass, but I caught plenty of like 25 to 35 inch bass this season on very light gear. And I had a blast doing it because there was not a lot of really big fish around. But I did have a few scenarios, like my biggest topwater bass of the season uh, was a 49 inch bass this, this uh, fall on a, on this, not this exact pencil, but a pencil that was like this that I lost, unfortunately. But uh, the same model of pencil as the six inch one. And uh, I talked a lot about this in like how you fish a blitz episode, but I kind of want to reiterate it because it's super important. When you're fishing a blitz, what I will do oftentimes is if I have caught a few schoolies or whatnot, and I notice that there's some bigger bass that seem to be popping up here and there, I'll wait, I'll hold my cast and I'll look and scan around. And then all of a sudden I'll see a pod of like two or three really big bass. And generally that's sig like you, the easiest way to see that is if they're way out there, like I'm talking 75 yards out in the water and you see a bass jump out of the water and it doesn't look like it's that big or you can even see it, uh, then it was a really big bass. And you'd be surprised, a lot of the time you'll see a bass jump like 75 yards out in the water and you'll think it's like, oh, it's only that big. And then you cast out there and there'll be 45, you know, 49 inch bass that are just enormous, but they're so far away that you're actually able to see them that far away, fully jumping out of the water. And the reason you're able to see them is because they jump so slowly because they're that big. You know, a lot of those little schoolies, if you film it in slow motion, they're jumping out of the water the same way, but you just see a flash of them. You're not seeing the full fish jumping out of the water. So, uh, that's one of those scenarios where like I'll be waiting and then when I see that, I'll launch a cast out there. It's gonna land two seconds later right where that fish was 
the school of bass will probably be in that same exact spot and for this scenario uh there was a school one big bass jumped out of the water i saw it but literally as it was going into the water i had a cast flying out there my pencil landed in the water i twitched it twice the top of my rod i don't even know if the plug came, came onto the surface of the water yet and a big bass ate it and i was into him and it was just you know I knew it was huge because it pulled a lot of line out and I, granted I was using, you know, the nine light carbon surf and a VSX van stall 150 with 30 pound braid and whatever, but it was, and so like it would pull a lot of line, uh, regardless of, because like the, the gear was very, uh, light for a fish of that size, but I didn't expect there to be bass of that size, but I still whooped that bass and that was at the end of my cast. I still whooped that bass in like two minutes. So uh that's pretty like impressive for that gear to be able to turn a bass like that i was impressed by how the rod and the reel handled that fish but now i'm kind of getting more into the weeds of my gear that i use but that's kind of my favorite thing to do especially if you can get big bass like that that that's like unrivaled by anything else in my opinion huge bass on light tackle top water i mean you obviously can't beat that but uh back to like pencils in general so there's a few different ways you can work pencils uh, I'm not really going to get into the actual how you work a pencil popper. I do have a video about how I personally work pencils on my YouTube channel. Uh, and that is, you know, it's an older video, but it's still filmed well. And uh, you should be able to, when you watch that video, it does what I always do and how I always work pencils. But I'll give you the rundown of how you can in different ways that I've seen guys use pencils and still catch giant fish doing it. So I feel like I should probably talk about it because I don't think a lot of guys talk about this specific way of working a pencil and I'm gonna talk about it because one of the guys that I know that is very, like catches a lot of really big bass on pencils, uh, will reel his pencil way differently than I do. And it's it's just different. So well, for, for example, we're just gonna use this. When I'm working a pencil, you'll see that I'm deliberately reeling in a way. And so, okay, I guess I'll do it just quickly run through what happens. So what I'll do is when I'm reeling a pencil on my mind, what all I'm trying to do is maintain tension to the plug while actually moving it with the tip of my rod. And that's why I try to, you know, tell people like if I'm trying to tell uh, somebody that I'm guiding how to work a pencil, that's what I'm going to tell them. I'm going to say, think in your mind just to maintain tension to the plug with how fast you're reeling and you're moving the pencil by implementing rod action to the plug. So I'm gonna be moving my rod tip up and down. And generally for the most part, I'm actually squeezing my rod like this with my hand because that's gonna be less work than me using my whole body to work a, work a giant rod. I literally just wanna use my hand and I'm squeezing the rod and that's gonna get a nice rhythmic action to that will make the pencil walk like this on the surface of the water. And it's gonna be doing it pretty slowly. It's gonna walk back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And uh, what that does is it gives the bass plenty of time to uh, see the plug walking back and forth on the surface of the water. Uh, it's not gonna be able to get a good gauge of what it is. It's gonna look very similar to an injured adult bunker or an injured fish in general, you know, up on the surface of the water. Uh, it's gonna almost get that reaction strike and annoy the bass into hitting it. Uh, whether it's hitting it because it's annoyed or whether it's hitting it because it thinks it's prey, it's gonna hit it. And that works amazing both when bass are blitzing and both when bass are deep or shallow and just finicky and won't hit anything else. Uh, pencils work in all of those different scenarios. When you have big wind and big surf, they work great. And you can work them the same way that I'm telling you to work them right now. The other way you do it, and this is a way that I personally don't work them, but I have in the past and I've caught fish. I know people that do and catch really big fish. And I really think it's all on like how the fish is feeling at the time. You're gonna be reeling a little bit faster. So this time I'm gonna implement a slow retrieve. And this is like a steady slow retrieve at about this speed. Well, I mean, whichever hand you're reeling with, it's gonna be a slow steady retrieve. And what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm just gonna give it subtle twitches with my wrist. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make that, that pencil walk in an S pattern like this across the surface of the water. It's a more subtle way of working it. And if the bass are being more finicky, I think it works. I think that it's a completely different way of working it and it's more subtle. And I think if the bass are finicky, they will probably like that more than if you're really tearing up the surface of the water. If you walk it in a little bit more of an S pattern, they'll eat it like crazy. And I've seen 
pictures and I've seen videos of bass eating this plug all the way into their mouth because it's just walking like an S across the surface of the water. And that is another fantastic way uh, to catch bass using pencils. And it's a way that not a lot of guys talk about. So I thought that I would say, this is how I do it, which is by working it like crazy across the surface. And another way that a lot of guys do, and I've seen be very productive for big fish, is having that more of the S walking pattern across the surface of the water. And it seems to work outstandingly well. Um, and then again, as I said, like it works for calm, flat conditions, big waves, big waves and chop, choppy conditions, big stiff wind. Sometimes it's the only thing you can get out there in those really windy conditions. It works for every different scenario you'd imagine. And this is why for me, pencils are very versatile. Um, and I, I guess the last thing I really want to say is I fish them 99.9% .9 of the time during the day. I've never really experimented with throwing them at night. Uh, I think they work a little too fast uh, at night for it to really be as effective as it should be. Uh, do I think they could work at night? Yeah, I think that probably you could get a bass to hit it at night. Um, I always go back to one story where I was uh, using a super strike darter and I thought I had seaweed on the darter and I started burning it in across the surface of the water and the darter was skipping on the surface of the water and I had a 30 pound bass jumping like a dolphin out of the water behind the plug and I stopped it and the bass ate the plug right off the super strike darter right off the surface of the water. And uh, so, and I was reeling that as fast as I could. It was skipping on the surface of the water and the bass still was following it and tracking it and knew where it was. So yeah, there's certain scenarios where um, having something that's fast and aggressive on the surface is, you know, works. But I think that there's other plugs that would work better and give off the same profile that those bass want. Like a needlefish, a floating needle, for example, would give off a better profile and uh, be more productive than a pencil popper at night or a Danny plug if you wanted that you know loud action on the surface. Uh, either one would work better or spook for that matter. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you found this uh, interesting or you really like this video, please like and subscribe. I have a ton more content coming, both of me actually fishing and uh, of like more stuff like this. Please give me suggestions. Uh, I have tons of other stuff I've I've talked about as well on the channel and I'm going to talk about a lot more different plugs that I use and love using. So again, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.